Hey guys, today on Tactical JK, we're going to be walking around this beautiful 2008 Jeep Wrangler JKU and talking about some of its mods. If you've watched a few of my other videos, you'll notice this Jeep does look a little different. For example, this bumper is different and the headlights. And that's because I have been swapping a few parts over to our new build, which we'll have a walk around of here soon. So let's start off by talking a little bit about this Jeep. This is a 2008 Jeep Wrangler JKU that I got completely stocked back in 2016. Like I said, it's a 2008, so this is the second year Jeep actually made the four doors. And it is in this really pretty green metallic color. This is honestly my favorite color green Jeep has made. They've got the rescue green, the commando green, but this is my favorite because it gets really light in the sun, but in the shade like this, it starts getting a little darker and just looks good. So first up, let's talk about the soft top of this Jeep, which is gonna be a Best Top Trek Top NX. Now the Best Top Trek Top has this very cool slant back style, which makes it one of the coolest looking mods I think you can do to a Jeep. I put this soft top on in 2016 and it has held up pretty well. It's, I don't know if it's picking up on camera well, but it's super black because I keep doing that cleaning process I made a video about. And it's just overall been a great soft top, a little bit loud on the roads, but more than makes up for that with the cool style. So one cool thing about the soft top is that it actually has a kind of quick fold sunroof feature. All you have to do is release the two latches near the front of the windshield, and then you can step out and fold the top back in the front. So you kind of have that open air topless experience in the front two seats without actually having to remove the whole top. But the number one feature of the Best Top Trek Top NX is just how easy it is to remove the rear windows. Every summer I'll end up taking these off and putting them on like every week or two and it only takes about a minute to do. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and time myself because I need to remove all three of these windows to show you the next mod, so we'll see exactly how long it takes. So that didn't take too long, and next up we can talk about this DIY cargo cover I built. This cargo cover stays under the soft top at all times and keeps people from unzipping the windows and stealing what's in the trunk. And also, as you can see, when the rear windows are removed, it still protects the trunk and gives the Jeep a nice look. Now basically it's just made of these two pieces of plywood, and it is mounted to all the factory hardtop holes that you would normally mount a hardtop at and the two pieces are connected in the middle with the extra piece of wood. Now, I really like this design. There's a lot of videos out there that show you how to do this, and it is a great mod, and it'll hold a little bit of weight. Here's how it kind of looks from the inside of the Jeep. Also, I just used spray adhesive and automotive carpet to give this kind of factory look, and it does look pretty close to the factory carpet on the back of these seats. One thing that I think is cool about my design that I didn't see on a lot of other people's is that it actually goes down in the front where it will kind of meet the seat. That basically just comes down at kind of an angle so that when you fold up the seat, kind of got to pull out the seat belt out of the way, but when you fold up the seat, it will sit where you can't get back there. It's kind of locked right there. It's at the same angle as the seat, and that way I lock the seats where they won't fold down in the summer, and you cannot get back there. In case you want to make your own seats where they won't fold down, you just do this car seat hook and attach it to this when the seats are folded up, and then you cannot fold them down. So from there, let's go ahead and work our way down to the tires. Here we have some 35 inch tires. These are 315.70 R17 Cooper Tire STT Pros, which is just an awesome tire. And I definitely picked them for my next build. This particular set has about 40,000 miles on it. And that's kind of the tread wear. You probably get a little bit more life at it, out of it, but not much. It's definitely on the end. But these have been a great tire and they just now got noisy. They were pretty quiet up until a few months ago. Those tires are wrapped around a set of Rubicon takeoff wheels, and I think they make the Jeep look really cool. You can usually find a set of Rubicon takeoff wheels for less than $300 on Facebook Marketplace, sometimes for even like $150. So if you have a Sport or Sahara, I definitely recommend getting Rubicon takeoff wheels because, ah, man, they just look so good. Here's kind of a look from the back. And now let's talk about our wheel spacer setup. We're running two inch lug centric wheel spacers. That's kind of how much clearance we got. Definitely pokes the tires out a little bit and looks pretty good. I wouldn't recommend this particular set of wheel spacers, but if you want to know my opinion on wheel spacers, I kind of just made a whole video about that. As far as the lift goes, all we're running is 0.75 inches of Daystar leveling kit on the front and rear. 
And honestly, we've got a pretty good amount of clearance. My Jeep on with a two and a half inch lift doesn't have that much more clearance, but I think it's mainly because these tires are so worn out. But here's kind of how a leveling kit looks with very worn out 35s. And honestly, I think it's a pretty good look. It makes the tires look super big and we do have a little bit of travel. You probably couldn't wheel with this setup, but for just driving around town, I think that's gonna get you what you need. So now let's talk about my favorite mod and our first ever sponsored mod, which is our set of 1310 front and rear drive shafts. After lifting the Jeep and installing the tires, whenever you switch to four wheel drive, the front drive shaft made this sound. the upper joint of the front drive shaft couldn't handle the increased angle of the lift and the extra load of the 35s. So I reached out to Adams Drive Shafts and they sent us a set of their super beefy 1310 front and rear drive shafts. And now I know that problem is going to be fixed for these 35s and with 37s, probably even with 40s the way I drive. These are some really solid drive shafts. Now I didn't get to make a full install review video like I normally would because I actually got these drive shafts before we started the YouTube channel. But here's a little bit of how the install looked. And with that, our journey with this Jeep is officially over. I'm gonna be posting it for sale in the next week or two, so if you want it. But um, anyway, I love this Jeep, it's super cool, but it's time to work on that new build. And speaking of the new build, we're getting an Apex Performance USA power steering cooler in, I think this Wednesday, and we're gonna be installing it in either the next video or the next, so that should be pretty sweet. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't so you can check out that video and like this one and you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to all the people that have subscribed and I will catch you on the next video.